What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb without a hat here, ladies and gentlemen. And you know what day it is? Today is Wednesday, my dude. So it is time for another Jacksonville Jaguar mock draft. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you are opposed to who I have selected in the first round in this draft and you guys think that we should have drafted a different position, I guarantee you 100% whichever mock draft that you would do in the first round, I have already made. I like to do these mock drafts, play out different scenarios, and play out which player should the Jaguars actually draft in the first round, with the final mock draft me doing being 100% what I think the Jaguars should do. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the mock draft 5.0 for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and let's hop right into the video. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Tree from Troop Talks, and this is the Jacksonville Jaguars mock draft 5.0. One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, Fournette. What is going on everybody? What is going on everybody? What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. Round 1, pick 7, defensive tackle Ed Oliver out of Houston. Now, I told you guys in the last mock draft that I am not one of those guys that thinks the Jaguars should address depth on the defensive line in the first round. But when you're selecting 7th overall and you got a guy like Ed Oliver looking at you right in the face, you need to take a guy like that. Ed Oliver, one of the most talented players overall in this draft and one of the best at his position, if not the best at his position, maybe other than Quinn Williams. This guy has a high motor, and he has a high floor and a high ceiling. So this guy's a really, really safe pick at the 7th overall spot. But the problem that a lot of Jaguars have is that they think we should draft a starter right out of the gate. So either that be a wide receiver, offensive tackle, you know, whatever, tight end even. Uh, they want a starter on the offensive side of the ball to make a difference. But honestly, a depth signing at the defensive line at number 7 when you can get a guy of Ed Oliver's talents and his level of play... I think that would be a tremendous, tremendous selection by the Jacksonville Jaguars the more and more I think about it. So you got Marcel Darius and Avery Jones in the middle. Those two are big boys. You know, they are not going to be, you know, they're going to get winded. They're going to need to come off the field. And then him and Taven Bryan, Taven Bryan, of course, our first round selection of last year, could come in at the defensive tackle spot and be a great change of pace. And Ed Oliver might even earn the starting job over like Avery Jones uh, once the season kind of gets up and running. I think this guy has potential to be a great piece to this elite Jacksonville Jaguar defense that I think he is definitely worth taking a stab at in the first round of the 2019 NFL Draft. Round 2, pick 6, offensive tackle, Andre Dillard, Washington State. Now in my opinion, Andre Dillard is the best offensive lineman in this draft, you can at me if you want, but I've seen this guy play live. He is tremendous. Now, in your opinion, if he is not the best offensive lineman in this year's draft, you have no choice but to accept the fact that he is indeed the most athletic offensive lineman in this year's draft. And if he makes it out of the first round, I will be completely, completely shocked. But if he does make it out of the first round, Andre Dillard should be number one on the Jaguars draft board for day two. He did get invited to the NFL draft. He was one of the 33, 33, 32 players that were invited to the NFL draft. So there is a high possibility that he could be a day one pick. But if he survives until day two, this is a guy that Jaguars absolutely, absolutely need to take a shot on and they need to, to draft in the second round. If Andre Dillard is on the clock and the Jags don't select him when they come time to pick, I will be very... Very upset. This will be a big steal in the second round and would help our offensive line out tremendously. This guy could be a day one starter at the right tackle position opposite side of Cam Robinson. He's obviously going to have to compete with Will Richardson and Ogabaye. You know, they're going to have to compete to get that job. But Andre Dillard with his intangibles and his athleticism, I think without a doubt in my mind, he is going to be competing for that job and he could get it. If Andre Dillard is on the board in the second round, the Jacksonville Jaguars better snatch this guy up because he is a future star in the making. Round 3, pick 5, tight end, Dawson Knox, Ole Miss. 
Dawson Knox is the selection at the tight end position here. I knew a lot of people were going to get angry that I didn't do one in the first or the second round. But I think Andre Dillard and Ed Oliver, two really good high caliber players in this year's draft, I think is forgivable on not selecting a tight end in either the first or the second round. And snagging up Dawson Knox in the third round is not necessarily a bad get. Though he is not necessarily at the talent level of a guy like Hawkinson or Noah Faint, he has potential. He has a high ceiling, and he's going to be in a tight end room where he has an opportunity to start and an opportunity to hone his craft and make sure he can be the best tight end he can be. He's going to be in there with Jeff Swain, Ben Koyak, James O'Shaughnessy, and if that doesn't help your confidence, I don't know what will. Dawson Knox could be the starting tight end for the Jags next year and would be a reasonable selection in the third round if they get two players of other position needs that uh, are going to fill a void uh, very well. And I think that's what we did here in the first and the second round, addressing Ed Oliver, giving us good depth on the defensive line to be able to get constant pressure on the quarterback and as well be a factor in the run game. We got Andre Dillard, who could be a future starting tackle for the Jags. And then in the third round, snatching up Dawson Knox, who is still a talented tight end. And the tight end class this year is probably the deepest position group this year in the NFL draft. So selecting Dawson Knox in the third round, again, is not a bad get, especially with who we have selected in the first and the second round. He may not be an instant impact player, and he might be a little rough around the edges when he first starts, but that's how it is with rookies that are drafted, you know, anytime. That's how it is with any rookie if you're drafted. They're going to be a little bit rough around the edges, and I could see Dawson Knox being that kind of guy, being a little rough around the edges. But he's going to get an opportunity to get a lot of playing time, so I think that's only going to help Mr. Knox develop his craft and develop his skills to be a true NFL tight end. Round 3, pick 34, edge rusher Austin Bryant out of Clemson. Austin Bryant's one of the slept-on uh, edge rushers in this year's uh, NFL draft. And I think he has a high, high ceiling. You know, his floor is a little bit low. He has, he's very raw. He's kind of like a Taven Bryan. He's a project to be built. And to build him along, what better way to do that than to pair him up with Calais Campbell and Yannick Ngakwe. I know that didn't really work with Taven Bryan, but Taven Bryan was playing a position that he wasn't used to playing at the defensive end position. He's a true, true defensive tackle. However, Austin Bryant is definitely a true edge rusher. And to learn from a a guy like Yannick Ngakwe and Calais Campbell to perfect your skills and to hone your craft, you really cannot ask for two better mentors in that aspect. And I think Austin Bryant, with the good coaching that we have and the two uh, veteran pass rushers we have on this team that have been dominant for the last two, three years, uh, Austin Bryant is going to develop and he's going to learn and he's going to be able to come in during certain snaps for the Jags uh, for Yannick Ngakwe or Calais Campbell to come in and make an impact. And I think with how high his ceiling could be, I think that with the coaching we have again and the players we have around him, he's going to match that ceiling and I think he would be a good selection with our second pick in the third round. Round four, pick seven, Emmanuel Hall, wide receiver, Missouri. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. You did not think I was going to even pick a wide receiver. You guys were watching this like, is Treep even going to pick a wide receiver? What the fuck? But here we are, and we're going to wait until the fourth round to do it because I think with the three, four picks we had ahead of them, makes sense. You know, it's, it's kind of like the best available strategy uh, that I did in this draft. And I think that with the first three with Ed Oliver, Andre Dillard, Dawson Knox, and even Austin Bryan a little bit, those were the best players available on the board at the time. And I think they could be tremendous assets to this team. So that's why we waited a little bit to end up snagging a wide receiver. And we don't get one until the fourth round and we select Emmanuel Hall. Now, in my defense... I don't think in this situation I should I probably should have drafted a safety or something like that in the 4th round instead of a wide receiver cuz once you get into the 4th, 5th, 6th round, 7th round, you're not going to have as many talented wide receivers to pick from. Emmanuel Hall not disrespecting him, he is a talented cat and he has potential to be a good uh, NFL wide receiver, but he's not on the level of guys like Nikhil Henry, AJ Brown, DK Metcalf, you know the list goes on and on. But he has potential to be that but again, I probably should have addressed the safety position with this pick because I think picking a wide receiver in the fourth round uh, where I had him, I mean, it makes sense because the Jags do need some help at the wide receiver position, but this late in the draft probably doesn't make the most sense. But Emmanuel Hall does have the talent, so I'm not going to back down from this pick, 
All I'm going to say is, if you guys think that I should have gone a different position in the fourth round, I'm not going to disagree with you because, like I said, I think that we should have went safety here, but Emmanuel Hall, position of need, fills it. Uh, we could see what he could do, but again, probably not the necessarily best, safest pick here in the fourth round. But again, it's a fourth round selection. What are you going to do? So, Emmanuel Hall, welcome to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Round six, pick five, quarterback Gardner Minshew, Washington State University. Now, this is a little bit of personal bias. As you guys know, I'm a Washington State Cougars fan, and Gardner Minshew is the man. If you don't know who he is, follow him on Twitter. Follow Gardner Minshew on Twitter, and you will get to know the kind of person he is. He is he is basically Blake Bortles, but he has a better arm, better mechanics. Like, just his personality, you know what I mean? He'd fit right in with Duval. Like, the way he is and the way his personality is, he'd fit right in with Duval. Uh, he led the nation in passing yards uh, last year, and he was also uh, a Heisman semi-finalist. He wasn't a finalist, but... Uh, he was almost there, you know, there was a couple of weeks on Twitter where it was like, tweet this for Gardner Minshew for Heisman, and you know, that was kind of an exciting time for me and Kooks fans alike, but then Washington happened, and basically all those dreams went down the shitter, ladies and gentlemen, but no fault of Gardner Minshew, Washington has just always had Washington State's number, uh, they've always had Mike Leach's number, uh, Coach Peterson always just coaches leech under the table and it's kind of embarrassing to watch, but again, going on a little bit of a tangent, Gardner Minshew... He's not necessarily accurate on the deep balls, but his short throwing attempts are always on the money. And that's the offense the Jaguars are trying to run uh, with Nick Foles. So if Foles goes down, Gardner Minshew comes in. I think he fits the scheme the Jaguars are trying to run uh, with Foles and Phil Lupo. And I think he'd be a good system quarterback to kind of bring along. And again, you know, he's not a guy that we're asking to start. He's... He's a guy that we're asking to sit on the bench, and hopefully if uh, Foles goes down, he could come in and perform. And I think Gardner Minshew has that potential and has that uh, drive to do so. And he's better than Cody Kessler, so he'll he'll be a better uh, second option at the quarterback position. So, welcome to Duval, Gardner Minshew. I'm sure you will fit right in. Round 7, pick 22, running back, Miles Gaskin. I'm going to keep putting Miles Gaskin in uh, in my mock drafts till the Jaguars, you know, I'm sure they watch my videos. I'm sure Tom Coughlin and Doug Marone, you know, they always give this these videos the big thumbs up. And, you know, they look at me and they're like, Treep really understands the draft process. He really understands what we should do as a team. So this Miles Gaskin guy, he's consistently been on Treep's mock draft. You know, maybe we should try and get him in the later rounds. Treep, you are a genius. We need to select Miles Gaskin. You are 150% right. All these running backs we signed in free agency, they don't matter. They don't matter. You know, we, we are looking for a guy to step in and be the man. And you know what else? Miles Gaskin is going to be the man, ladies and gentlemen. I've spent a lot of time talking about Miles Gaskin. If you haven't already heard me talk about him and his talents, go watch any of my other prior mock drafts and you know how much I feel about this kid and how good I feel about him and how I know he is going to be a future star in the NFL. I'm not going to go too much into it because, like I said, if you want to know my feelings about him, you can watch any of my other mock drafts. It's kind of like a professional wrestling YouTube and they keep talking about the Montreal screw job. You know, they've talked about it enough. I've talked about Miles Gaskin enough. If you need any of my opinion, just know he's had a thousand yards all four years in Washington. He's a tremendous, tremendous athlete. He's good at catching the ball. He's good speed back. You know, he does it all. He do, he's a do it all running back, a do it all player. And I hope the Jaguars do the right thing and select Miles Gaskin, whether it be in the seventh round or even earlier than that. And that was my Jaguar 7-Round Mock Draft 5.0. What'd you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Von Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. That's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.